One of the great powers of operators is that they can be used to find expectation values of the classical observables. We will use the position operator as an example of how this works in practice. This can be written as x hat times psi is equal to x times psi. Since order is important, we will multiply on both sides, on the left, psi star, and an integrate over all space. On the right hand side, this simplifies to the expectation value. This means that putting a quantum mechanical operator between psi star and psi and integrating over all space results in the expectation value of the classical observable. This result can be generalized as our force postulate, which is stated as, if the system is in a state described by the normalized wave function psi, then the average value of the observable corresponding to the operator a hat is given by the expectation value of a is equal to the integral over all space of psi star a hat psi times dx. So let's apply the fourth postulate and use it to find expectation values. So in our example here, we are going to be finding the expectation of the momentum of our particle, and we're going to be using our solution to the particle in a box problem, being psi of x is equal to root 2 over a times sine n pi x over a. And so writing ex explicitly what was just defined in the postulate, we are going to integrate over all space, and in this case, all space, we only need to look at between 0 and a. We are going to have the complex conjugate of our wave function, we are going to write our momentum operator. We are going to have the wave function itself times dx. And again, this is just the fourth postulate written out explicitly, where now I have just subbed in for my momentum operator because I'm trying to find the expectation value of the momentum. So if I sub in explicitly into this, then I get the expectation value of p of x, integral from 0 to a, the complex conjugate, well, since my psi is real, then it's the exact same value, root 2 over a sine n pi x over a. I'm going to substitute in my momentum operator. That's negative i times h bar d by dx. And then I'm going to write in my psi, root 2 over a sine of n pi x over a times dx. Let's now move all of the terms we can out front and try to simplify this expression. The one thing we have to pay attention to here is that because I have a differential operator here, I can't pull anything to the left of it that has an x associated with it. So in this case, because my sine n pi x over a over here has an x in it, that is then going to have this differential operator applied to it. However, this root 2 over a since that has no function of x associated with it, I can pull it out front. So that means that I can write p of x, that's equal to, I'm going to pull out all like terms, I'm going to have minus i h bar 2 over a, again my integral between 0 and a, sine of n pi x over a, d by dx sine of n pi x over a times dx. And like I said, now we have to evaluate this, this differential on this sine n pi x over a, because I have to apply it to everything to the right of it. That means then I'm going to get expectation value of p in the x direction, minus 2 i h bar over a. 0 and a is the bounds of our integration sine of n pi x over a. Well, the derivative of sine, that's just the cosine of n pi x over a. Using the chain rule, I've taken the derivative of the outer function, which is the sine function. Now I take the derivative of the inner function. The derivative of n pi x over a is just going to be n pi over a. And so then all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to move all those terms out front. So I have minus 2i h bar n pi all over a squared. Between 0 and a is my integral. Sine of n pi x over a. Cosine of n pi x over a. dx.
Now to solve this integral, I'm going to go and substitute or use a trig identity to simplify this sine cos type relationship that I have. And so what I can do is I can say, let 2 times sine theta cos theta equal to sine of 2 theta. And so if I use this expression of this relationship, then I can simplify my expression to be expectation value of p of x. I'm going to have minus i h bar n pi over a squared. I'm going to then have the integral from 0 to a. Well, I took the 2 from before, and I've got a sine times cos. And so then that means I'm going to have then sine of 2 times theta. Theta is all the stuff that's inside, so n pi x over a. And as you can see, this has suddenly become a much simpler integral to solve. Now, of course, integration is an art. There are many ways that you can solve these integrals. You could have gone and looked up an integral table and found the integral of sine times cos of a bunch of constants times x and found a solution there. In this case, I just used a trig identity. But either way, they are both equally correct methods to the solution because, like I said, integration is, is an art. All right, so now let's evaluate this integral. We have expectation value of p in the x direction minus i h bar n pi over a squared. The integral of sine, well, that's just going to be equal to the negative of cos 2n pi x over a. And then, of course, to satisfy the antiderivative so that I regain what I had before, before I integrated it, then I'm going to have to also multiply this by a bunch of constants, a over 2n pi. This I'm going to evaluate between 0 and a. Again, I'm going to move a bunch of constants out front. So I have n pi on the bottom, n pi on the top, so they cancel out. I have an a on top, and I have an a squared on the bottom, so that cancels out. So what I'm left with here is expectation of p sub x minus i h bar. And I can actually get rid of that minus sign. So I have i h bar all over 2a, and that I'm going to be then multiplying by the cosine of 2 n pi x over a, evaluated between 0 and a. So let's now put in these bounds of integration, and let's um, apply our fundamental theorem of calculus. i h bar over 2a. I'm going to have the cosine of 2 n pi a over a, and I'm going to subtract from that the cosine of 0. So right away we can say the cosine of 0, that's just equal to 1. Here I can cancel out my a's, and so what I'm left with is the cosine of an integer multiple of 2 pi. So this is going to be 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, and all of those, the cosine of any of those, that's still also equal to 1. So that I'm left with expectation value of the momentum in the x direction, i h bar over 2a, 1 minus 1. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 times a bunch of constants. That's still equal to 0. So let's think about what this solution means. Remember, what we were just calculating was the average value of the momentum of the particle in the box. And that just because we have an average momentum is equal to zero, that does not mean that the particle is not moving. What it means is that it's equally likely for the particle to be moving both in the right and to the left. Because if it's equally likely moving to the right and to the left, then the average is going to be equal to zero. So this result, this, this expectation value of the momentum in the x direction being equal to zero does not mean that the particle is standing still. It just means that it's moving both to the right and to the left equally, and so therefore the average then ends up being equal to zero.